Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to have some fun and make a little bit of a game uh, where you have to sort some shapes in a virtual world. And we're going to focus in on our um, events that we've been learning and add in a couple extra things that we haven't looked at in the past. But I think you're going to have a whole lot of fun with it. So let's dive right in and look at some code. So the first thing we're going to do is import the same viz basic files we need. Our import viz, our viz fx, and our viz connect. And next, we're going to add in two extra import statements. The first one is a random generator. And we're going to use this to help us add some random colors to our world. And then the second one is we're going to import something called viz shape. And the library viz shape allows us to create all kinds of shapes in code. We don't have to add them to the inspector. We can just write some code and it will create the shape for us. And of course, we're going to import our grabber and we're going to import our physics like we did before. So we're still going to define our grabber methods, our release method, and our collide method. So I'm going to put those in. And for right now, as a placeholder, just so we can make the program run, I'm going to put that pass command. You remember that pass command that we talked about? You need to put something in a Python method. You can't just put it up on the screen. I should say function. Otherwise, you'll get an error. But with this, you will not get an error. It will be fine to have just this in it. And not, basically, when it runs it, it knows it's just a placeholder and nothing's actually going to happen. But then we can still call the methods without having to worry about uh, having actual code in there. So we're going to put in our world and our callbacks. like we did before. These are all similar from the last assignment. We're going to add in our ground, like we did before, so we can drop things on the floor. And then we're going to add in a text message. But this time, I'm going to make it, instead of being on the screen, I'm going to make it a 3D message. So I'm going to say, actually, I want to sort. Sort, and we're going to say, sort the shapes. How about that? Kind of like directions for the player. Let's add the code in to add that text. So the command to add in a 3D shape is viz.addText3D. We put in our message and our position. This is different than the screen. Um, where we just add text and the message would be the message, but the, the screen would be viz.screen. It wouldn't be the position. So the thing that changes is this part here where it says viz.screen rather than just a position. And it wouldn't be text 3D, it'd just be text. Okay, now let's have some fun with our world and add in some boxes. So to do that, I need to create a list of boxes. So we do that with a variable. And we put in our two brackets. Oops. There we go. To let Python know, oops, I should say boxes equals. There we go. That we want to set up an empty list. Right now, nothing's in it. And we're going to add things to our list. Namely, we're going to add boxes. So the command to add a box is viz.addbox. And then we have to set a position for it. And I might say, um, we're just going to put it 1, comma, 1, comma, 1. Close my parentheses. So this will add a box to the screen. 
we could see, I don't even know if this is going to run yet, but we'll see. I think I have enough in there to run it. Yeah, if we look, there's our box. It says sort the shapes. We got a nice little box on the screen. Um, we want to be able to add in some other things to it. We want to make the box so it can collide with things that are in our world. And I want to make sure I've enabled that collision, notify, so that way when I grab it or um, drop another box on it, I get notified. And we got the drop down to help us here. Next, I want to add it into my boxes list. So now I got my box added. And I could keep adding more and more boxes. But we're going to speed this process up. Um, I'm going to add in my grabbable objects. And I'm going to do it differently this time. This time, again, I'm going to create an empty list. And instead of adding in them using append, I'm going to extend the list by adding in the boxes list that I just started. So remember this extend command really essentially joins two lists. So I'm taking the grabbable objects list, which is empty, and I'm going to join it with the boxes list. And I'm going to set up my tools for my grabber. And you also have to make sure that your viz connect is correct. And I'll put this in for you, um, the viz configure. That will be in the folder, same one we've been using. I'm going to run this, and now I should have a box that I can grab. And it makes this full screen and drop down here, fly forward a little bit. Oops, there we go. And you can see now I can pick up the box and drag it around the room. Like that. Notice it does hit the wall. Okay, but it does go through the wall. So we're going to have to work on that and fix that later. Okay, that's great. But suppose I didn't want to just add one box at a time. That seems really, really cumbersome to keep going box one, box two, box three. Instead, I want to add in as many boxes as I choose. So we had a, a structure in Python that allows us to add in um, and do things re repeatedly. Uh, we called that a loop and we did it with what's called a for loop. So I'm going to tab all these things in so that way they're going to be inside the for loop. I'm going to say for x in range 10. So that's going to do 0 through 9. That's a range of, of 10. And a, 0 through 9 is 10 items. I'm going to create the box and put it in the same position. But I don't know if I want to put it in the same position. Let's put it in X position. Let's see what that does. And run that. Hope that I do something wrong. Oh, I forgot my colon at the end of my for loop, of course. Let me do that again. Okay, so now I got 10 boxes in a row. And they should all be grabbable. Should we fly this? I remember we did this very similar kind of thing with the beach balls where um, we were able to create a whole bunch of beach balls in a row using a for loop. So we're really kind of doing some, we're combining some ideas that we've done in the past. All right, so let's do, that's kind of interesting. Let's do a little bit more. Suppose I wanted to have the boxes be all different colors, and I wanted them to be in different positions. Well, first, to make them in different positions, I need to get my random values. So I'm going to pick up three random values. I'm going to add that into my loop. 
And I'm going to call this... Um, random x I think the order of this was xyz random y random z So the command to do a random number is random dot rand range and then I put in the numbers from 10 to 15. It will give me a random number from 10 up to 15, but not including 15. Now, the reason why I divided it by 10 is when I use this as a position, it's going to be 10 to 15 meters. That's way too far away. Most everything in our world is you know, within a meter or two. So I'm just going to divide that value by 10. So mathematically, that's going to give me a random number between 1 and 1.5. And I think I want to use some different ranges for the other ones. I think I'm going to do um, this one. I'm going to do 20 to 21. So they're not super, super high. OK, and my position now, I'm just going to put in my three variables. Random x. Random y. And random z. I think that's the right order. OK. Um, so I'm adding the box. Its size is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 by 0.3. Again, less than a meter. And its position is in a random position. Let's see how that works. Oh, now it looks like the box kind of dropped out of the sky and bashed into each other and landed randomly throughout the room. That looks kind of good. Okay. The other thing I want to set maybe is I'd like the boxes to be different colors. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create another random, but I'm going to do it in a special way. This random is going to be different. It's using another random method called random choice random choice will choose a random color within a list so here's the command random choice and then i put the parentheses and i've set up a list of values in here and i got to assign it to another list so how about box color okay so it's going to randomly pick a item from this list. And it says I'm missing parentheses. Oh, no, I got an extra one. There we go. And assign it to box color. So it's either going to be viz red, viz green, viz blue, viz purple, viz orange, viz yellow. You can add in whatever you want. It should populate in the dropdown. And now I'm going to add in that color to my shape. Now I could do it one of two ways. I could do box.color or I could just add it as another parameter in the creating of the box. So I think I'm going to do comma color equals, what did I call it? My color? Oh, box color. So now that is set to a random color and I'm going to add that into the box. So we can do it that way. See how that worked. There we go. Now we got a whole bunch of random colored boxes. Uh, I'm going to show you the other way too. Instead of doing this way, sometimes it's nice to have more than one way of doing something. I can set the color just using box.color and then set it to box color, which is my random color. And there we go has the same effect. So I can do it either way. Um, sometimes it's easier for people to see if I kind of space things out a little bit. So we can set it up that way. OK, so now we got a bunch of random boxes. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, suppose we wanted to, and they're all grabbable. We Actually, I should probably show you that. We can go in and fly around and grab any one of those boxes because they were just added to our list. Let's 
See? Any one of them is grabbable. Okay. Suppose we wanted to add in some other shapes. Well, we could go through and just copy all of this whole code and instead of doing a box, maybe changing some of those variable names to ball, right? So instead of doing box, we can make it a ball. And I just so happened, you know, like they do in those cooking shows, I have created that and it created a bunch of random colored balls. Again, I created another list for range in zero to 10, I created my shape. This time I kind of just put it all in one statement, random range for all three positions. Uh, I added something else in there called Euler and this will rotate the ball a little bit. If you want to add that in, that gives you a way of kind of positioning the ball. You could add that as well to the, um, the squares. In fact, we could go back and do that. Let's add that in. Let me go back up to my boxes and we'll just do it this way. Box dot Euler equals 20 random range between 90 and um, zero and 90 with a step of 30 and then zero. So now when I drop my boxes, Oh, look, now I got my um, balls too, boxes and the balls all popping around. Everything's going in different angles. Okay, so that's great. Uh, added the collision, just like I did with the boxes, added the collision sphere and add it to uh, my list called balls. But I wanna make it so I can also grab those objects. So I'm gonna add in the grabber object and extend that again, and this time add in my other list. Okay, how about cylinders? Let's add in some cylinders. That could be fun. So I'm gonna just basically do the whole thing again instead of using um, my squares or the balls, I'm gonna add in a cylinder this time. Same thing, uh, same kind of rotation, but when you're adding the cylinder, the code is a little different. I have to add in a height of 0.3 and a radius of 0.15. And in fact, if you look at the add sphere, it just had a radius. It didn't have um, a length, a width, and a height like the box did, which makes sense. The box had a length, a width, and a height, which I made all the same. And the sphere had, um, dot add sphere, had a 0.15 as the radius. And then the height of the cylinder is 0.3 and the radius is 0.15. I figured 0.15 is going to be half the size so that way they're all going to kind of look the same because radius is half the diameter. Position and color, that all that is the same parameters as we go through. And again, I put it all in in one statement. You could decide to break it up like we did in the boxes and do it in several statements. It's up to you how you want to do it. So I have all my cylinders. I also have to add them to the grabbable objects. So I'm going to go in here and add that in. Okay, so now I got everything added to my grabbable objects. I'm going to get boxes and cylinders and it kind of makes a big mess in the room. That's awesome. Okay, let's go in and do something with those methods that we talked about at the very, very beginning. The on grab. So I thought it'd be kind of fun that when we grabbed them, um, we changed their color. So on grab, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna change two colors. I'm gonna change the text color. Remember the text we have in the background? And I'm going to change it to the color of the object that I grabbed. And the way I access that is E is the name is the object I grabbed dot grabbed lets me know it's the thing I grabbed. So E is the event grabbed is the thing I grabbed. And then I'm going to set the color of the thing I grabbed to the color of the text by using the get color method. And then, ah, just for fun, I also wanted to set the color of the thing I grabbed to gray. So it's going to click to gray. 
So now when I run this, if I go and I grab something, I'll just fly down here and grab something. The words change to yellow and the box turn to gray. And I could show you again, make it purple, words turn to pot purple, and the cylinder turned to gray. Uh, I could still do the same released message if I want, just to say that it was released. So instead of doing on pass, I'm going to say released. If you want to get creative and mess around with the colors or mess around with uh, any of the other attributes of our object, it's still going to be e.grabbed, and then you're going to use uh, either dot uh, Euler, or maybe you're going to change the position. Uh, it's up to you. So when you release it, you can have it fly up into the air if you change its uh, .pos. So e.grab.pos would make it kind of fly into the air if you put in some different numbers for that. And then finally, my collide method. I'm going to do something kind of interesting. I'm going to choose some colors again. And anytime anything collides in this world, it's going to randomly choose a color same way we did before, color one and color two, and it's going to assign the object a color. So again, this is the event E. Object one was the first thing that collided, and then I'm gonna set its color. E is the event, object two is the other thing that it collided, and I'm gonna set its color. Let's see how that works. And look at that, now the stuff changes color as it bounces off each other. Okay. Pretty good so far. So I think we kind of have a nice little game here um, that as the player plays, the idea is to kind of sort out the boxes, right? Sort the boxes from the spheres and the cylinders. It's a fun way of figuring out how to move and manipulate things in a 3D world. Let's do one last thing. I want to go ahead and add in some more objects into my world. Uh, they're already there. Basically, I want to be able to address the walls that are in the world. So I'm going to add that in. And I already went into my world and I gave them names, just like we gave the floor a name and set up its collide plane. I'm going to set up a wall left and I'm going to do two things for the left wall. I'm going to start just to show you that I can set its color then I can also add to it what's called a collide mesh. Now there's different types of collisions that we can create. Uh, collide plane for the walls doesn't seem to work. It doesn't really do much at all. The collide mesh kind of keeps all the objects within the room. So I'm going to start with collide mesh. And I did one for the left wall, the front wall, the back wall, and all these names match the names that I have in the inspector. In fact, I can show you that open up the inspector, open up my world. Oh, I'm going to have to navigate to it. You can watch my whole file structure here. Sort shapes, here's my world, there we go. And you can see on the left-hand side here, I've created names for all three of these, wall back, wall front, wall left, wall right, and floor. Okay, so they're all named in there. And you know what, I think I'm gonna just get rid of the lights, because I don't think, I think they're distracting. So I'm just gonna go in and delete the two lights. Save this. Okay, so now I have all of my, everything named, and I have um, put this collide mesh on it. So let's see what happens. It's not going to make much of a difference, but it, it, the difference is it keeps everything in. But also notice now that the walls become part of that collide thing that changes the colors. So now the walls change colors too, which I think is kind of fun. But if you scroll up here and look down, you can see everything is contained in the box, which is what I wanted to happen. And then I could make my mission here to go around and sort things in the piles, right? Get a pile of boxes, get a pile of spheres, and get a pile of cylinders. And it says sort the shapes. 
And that's kind of the goal of the game. One last thing, because this is kind of fun. Um, I found out through experimenting that there's this thing called a collide. Um, it's called tube or something. Let's see, collide. Collide capsule. I don't know why this does this, but if I switch this to collide capsule and I drop those shapes, they kind of like explode out into the room. Well, if I make the wall left collide cl capsule, watch what happens. When it blows out, it actually hits the left wall and blows it away. Like it, it blew it out of, way over there out of the room. We can fly up and see what it did to it. You can see like the wall kind of just got flown out of the room. So if you want to do that, you know, you could put that if you wanted to on every single one of these. And you may not use it here in this version of the game, but you know, this could be kind of fun to do in the future for something. Oh, what did I mess up? Oh, I got an extra parentheses in there. There we go. And now you can see it totally blows the whole room apart, which I find kind of entertaining in the whole scheme of things, you know, that the room is just kind of blown apart and everything is floating everywhere. It's a big old mess. So that's fun to do. I think I'm going to go back to the original version, though, so I can make the game playable. There we go. And now we have our complete game where we can go around and sort the different shapes in VR and put them in different spots in the room and we have all of our awesome changing colors. So that is, I know this was a very long lesson, but there was a lot in here and it was kind of a lot of fun for me to do and I hope you had fun watching it. I will see you um, next time.